What's going on, Salt Strong Nation? I've got a very fun insider report for you guys today. We are gearing up to hunt for some monsters with none other than Captain Sharky Marquez himself of Outcast Charters. We're in Galveston today, going to be hunting along the jetty and inshore, looking for big redfish, drum, even flounder, and some really awesome tactics are going to be shared in this video about rigs, tackle, tactics, everything you guys need to know about how to get out and catch more fish fast. So right here, we're fishing up against some heavy structure, and we love to use this drop shot rig. And there's a couple of benefits of using this drop shot rig on heavy structure. Number one is our goal is to basically get this either sitting up against or in the structure. And we've got this shrimp that's actually locked in here. And what's great about this rig is no matter the depth of water, you can always change where this loop is at. So if you want to get that shrimp closer to the bottom, if you're flounder fishing, uh, because those flounder bed into the bottom, you can always move this loop a little bit further down. But basically, this is a great all-around rig for structure. If your weight gets stuck, we always tell our customers and clients, just keep that bait in the water because that redfish or drum or sheep's head will find that. They're going to smoke it, and it usually dislodges this little hook. But it's just a great way to keep your shrimp right in that strike zone, right in the water column where the fish are going to be hanging out at. And we're pitching it right up against these rocks here. The reason we fish this structure and we fish these rocks is because, essentially, uh, it's a great place for bait fish to kind of harbor out of the current and tuck into. It's always really key and we tell our customers, you want to get this bait as close up into the rocks as you can, as tight to that structure as you can to really be fishing the strike zone uh, where those predator fish are going to be smelling out the uh, smelling out the bait. So we're just going to cast right up in here and when that current brings our bait off the rocks about five to ten foot, I'm going to reel my line back in and cast it right up against the rocks. You've got about a three to four foot area that we like to tell our customers is the strike zone. Once you get out of that strike zone, not to say you'll never catch a fish, but your chances dramatically, they drastically go down uh, because you're not in that area where those those predator fish have their nose up into pick, picking in and out of these rocks. So, uh, Hooked up on the front, baby, let's go. Yeah, we catch big ones out here, man. That's what he was saying, y'all got some dull holes. Nice, dude. So check this out guys, we got this nice sheep's head here. Man, these sheep's head are some of the coolest fish ever. They actually have these giant teeth, like human-like teeth right there, check that out. And uh, why they have these teeth is basically they feed off the barnacles and crustaceans right up against structure. So if you ever want to specifically target these fish, man, and you don't have a boat, no problem. Go to your local pier, uh, find a dock with a lot of barnacles and crustaceans, and uh, where you see that, nine times out of 10, you're gonna be able to find these sheep's head just feeding right there off those barnacles. And uh, so we take our shrimp and crack, crack that shrimp open and uh, cast it right up into that structure. Man, look at that, beautiful fish. Chompers, bud. That's gonna do it. You're gonna feel that water moving pretty quick. There it is. Hey! Good redfish, good redfish on. Big fish. Woo! That's what I'm talking about. Nice fish. Yes, sir! So, man, we found a good spot with some finally some good tidal movement here and uh, casted that drop shot right up against the rocks. And basically I was just recasting every 30, 45 seconds as that bait would drift away from that strike zone, which is that three to five primal strike zone area um, where all those predator fish are swimming up and down the rocks, picking out bait. As that bait was drifting off, I would reel in, recast it right back up into the rocks. I think that was my second or third cast here. We've got good water clarity good water movement. I saw some bait busting the surface as we pulled up. You put those three things together, man, and uh, this is what happens. Get some nice slot redfish action right here. Look at that. Beautiful slot. Definitely a, a nice mid to upper slot here. Probably 26 inches right there in the money. Look at that gorgeous fish. Oh yeah. 
That's the money right there, guys. Right there on that drop shot rig, man, that holds that bait perfectly. Right there, right off the right off the bottom, man. That's what I love about this drop shot rig. You can pitch it up in there. It's not an easily snaggable rig, so you can fish heavy structure with it. And uh, super nice outcome, check that out. All right, so you can't really see it, guys, until you put it up against something white. Now, these redfish, you can see on their tails here, this little bit of a fluorescent blue. And what that is, is that, that uh, redfish, this time of year, is eating that blue crab. And it actually, as they digest it, it kind of moves down the, down the fish. It's really interesting. And the more blue crab and shellfish that these uh, redfish are eating, the bluer and more bright and fluorescent the tail will get. It's a really, really cool uh, little tidbit of information about these redfish, man. But uh, beautiful fish. We're gonna go ahead and release her. As we release this fish, we basically wanna get nice and level with the water here. And, boy, she, she didn't need much assistance. But uh, hold her gill side facing the current and just kinda hold that tail, let her do her thing all naturally until she's ready to take off. Man, once she kicks off, just let go with your hand, let her swim. She can grow big and you can come out here and do it again. So we stopped for a brief moment to try and do a tutorial on how to tie some of the rigs that we were catching fish with. And Captain Sharky's first mate, Gabe, actually hooked up with the fish using the exact same rig that we were filming a tutorial on. Gabe's on, Gabe's on, let's go. What you got there, bud? Feeling. Sheep's head right, king, man, hell. sheep's head king. Look at him go. The perch of the sea. The perch of the sea. Oh, that's a stud, dude. Let's see how you got it hooked. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Solid. Ice sheepy on the drop shot rig, baby, on the drop shot rig. So we went back to filming rig tutorials and giving some more tips on how to catch more fish on the rocks, specific tackle hooks, baits, everything like that, when we actually started to get a bite on our big rod. And Captain Sharky took notice of this. We stopped the tutorial we were filming and uh, just got prepared to get hooked up with a monster. I'll help you with these other ones too. There he is. So we've got our bite. He's been playing with the playing with the bait for a minute now. We've done our three cranks to tighten the drag. And as I feel the tension of him pulling down, I set up like that and we are hooked up, baby. <laughs> nice fish on here. Hit the crab bait. Either gonna be a big old monster drum or a big old red fish. Either way, definitely a nice fish on. I'm used to reeling with my left hand. This is a righty setup for our customers, but we're gonna make it happen. The main thing is I'm keeping this line very, very tight. I don't want this fish to have any slack in the line. As you can hear, our drag is our friend. We don't wanna tighten this up all the way because if that fish wants to run, it's just too much and it can either break that line or pull that hook out of its mouth. So all our job is to do is just to keep this rod tip up as we're fighting this fish, work them around the obstacles like the motors, and just try to stay in front of this fish with the rod. Here it comes, big old giant drum. Holy smokes, guys. <coughs> And we're not trying to man manpower this fish in. We want to be pretty gentle with it. Keep it away from the motors. Woo! There he goes, eating line. Very nice drum here. I'm gonna wait till he goes belly up just like that. And then I'm gonna start working him around to the side of the boat here. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Let's see if I can get him healed here. Just like so. One, two, three. And that is how you catch a monster drum right there, guys. Beautiful, beautiful fish. He's got a little gold tint to him, but he did exactly what we wanted. Look at this other one, other one getting picked up. Go ahead, Gabe. Tighten that drag. He's running with it. Set it. Hooked up, baby! Doubled up action! Outcast Charters! Woo! 
found the spot, got the right bait, casted it out. We're hooked up again, let's get it. So we casted out a few mullet, chunks of mullet and a few blue crabs, but man, these fish have seemed to zone in on the blue crabs. And uh, so that's the bait of choice here. And we doubled up, man. We haven't been here for more than five minutes, casted five rods out and a good double up, double up action on some big fish. You can't beat it. Oh, buddy, that's a freaking tank. <laughs> that's a tank right Look at here. that crab, guys. Look at that crab hanging right out of its mouth. Exactly did the job that we wanted to do. A nice corner of the mouth hook set like that. We're gonna just basically get this head into the net and I'm gonna use my right hand to pull him as we scoop. And all I wanna look, do is wait for that tail to curve up just like so. And instead of lifting this net straight out and breaking it right here, I'm gonna grab right here and I'm gonna lift straight up into the boat. So it's least pressure on this break point, this weak point of the net. One, two, and three. Comes into the boat, nice and easy set down. And that is a trophy drum right there, guys. Look at that thing, barely even fits in the net. All right, guys, just landed these two beautiful, massive Texas trophy size drum here. They've been on the crab. They did exactly what we wanted them to, man. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Now this fish, over 30 inches, has to go back into the water. These are great breeding fish, so we're gonna be really gentle and make sure that these guys get a good kick when we do release them. But awesome, awesome trophy size fish here in Texas. Can't beat it. So after finishing up all the videos for the mini course on how to catch more fish at the jetty, we headed over to one of Captain Sharky's flounder spots where he broke down one of his super secret rigs that is surprisingly effective at catching tons of flounder. What's going on guys? My name's Captain Sharky. We're out here in Galveston, Texas, filming with the Salt Strong crew today. And I wanted to take a second to share one of the most epic flounder rigs that is gonna double your flounder catch the second you start using it, man, we have caught hundreds and hundreds of flounder using this rig. So I'm gonna break it down with you. So we've got a quarter ounce jig head here on the bottom. I matched this up with a Berkeley Gulp. Man, I love to use the neon bright colors, especially out here in this murky water. And then about eight inches to a foot, maybe eight inches to 10 inches above here, we've got this loop knot. We've got a size eight treble hook and we put a live shrimp on that. And what that allows you to do is cast this bait out here and as you're working it on the bottom of the ocean floor, you're gonna thump that flounder that's bedded up underneath the sand in the head with this gulp right here. He's gonna open his eyes and guess what he's gonna see? That beautiful locked in shrimp right there flickering and he absolutely cannot turn down that shrimp. This is such a great rig because you're able to use the artificial and the live shrimp and these flounder are picky just like us. We don't eat at the same place every day, neither do these flounder, they want different stuff. So it's really unique when you really zone in and start fishing this rig, half the day you'll catch them on the artificial and then like a light switch, they'll just start hitting that live shrimp down there. So this is really one of my most secret but absolutely most productive flounder rigs we have ever used and you will catch a ton of flounder when you're throwing this tandem rig. All right guys, so we're fishing real tight to structure here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cast this line out just like so, right up against that structure. And these flounder, they love to bed up, whether you're fishing bulkheads, pilings, or just drops, uh, little contours on the ocean floor, they love to find areas to bed up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna initially let that bait sink. So I don't start reeling right out the gates. Right when that bait hits the water, I'm gonna let it sink down. I wanna make sure it's on the bottom. And then what I'm gonna do is do a few pops. And what that's gonna do is really activate that artificial and uh, start getting things in motion here. So I'm gonna pop, 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 and I'm just reeling in my slack. I'm gonna let it sit there for another 10, 15 seconds. And then I'm gonna pop, 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 pop. And just like that, I got a hit. Let's see guys. Felt like I got a hit on there. And what we're looking for is life on that rod tip. So I feel like I got a hit. I, I got a few nibbles there. I'm gonna slowly lift up. And if it feels like I'm dragging something. Just like that, guys, we got a flounder on. Hooked up. Nice flounder on here. Look at him flipping out there. Look at that, guys. Beautiful, beautiful flounder in the boat. He decided to eat the shrimp. That's a nice keeper, probably 16 inch flounder, 15 inch flounder there. But you gotta love the tandem rig. You can't beat it. 
So I kid you guys not, we were at this spot for maybe five minutes and we were hooked up every single cast using this rig. I was out there with Insider Wes Hall. We were catching flounder left and right. The first mate, Gabe, was catching them. Wes was catching them. I was netting them while trying to run the camera. It was pretty wild. All right, guys, we have been here for five minutes and we have caught some really, really nice quality fish. That is just one of the tips and tricks that we have coming your way. We've had an excellent day here in Galveston, Texas, filming with the Salt Strong crew. Yeah. And if you want to check out more videos like these, you better get on Salt Strong and get with the program Absolutely. because we're going to get you hooked up on your next trip. And if you want to learn how to find that 90-10 feeding zone like we did in this report, definitely go to saltstrong.com recipe to learn how to catch more fish in your area.